it is time for Art Journal Jazz. And let's open up our art journal. And before I get started, well, this is the page. Okay, that's what I did, November 15th. And this is the page that I'm gonna work on today. But before we get to that, I just did something that I said that I was not gonna do. Just went to Walmart, oh yes. And I'm not going to rant about Walmart all through this page. But I am gonna talk about this for just a second. This is part of a plastic bag. This is part of the plastic bag that ripped while I was in line because I had four sweet potatoes in it. I had four sweet potatoes and the bag totally ripped apart. All the sweet potatoes hit the floor and um, actually I was surprised. They like broke into pieces all over the floor. I thought sweet potatoes were harder than that. But Walmart has, uh, I've noticed this before, their bags are getting thinner and thinner and thinner. I mean, I feel that they should at least have bags thick enough to, you know, hold a peanut. Uh, but that's what it's gonna get to. We're gonna have to like put one peanut per bag as they get thinner and thinner. So, I'm gonna go back to September 2nd. I think that was the last time I ranted about Walmart. And I'm gonna pull out one of my little things that are in here too tightly. And I'm gonna write, Then Walmart bags. And I'm gonna put this in the no envelope. No, no to the bags. I'm gonna file that away there and I'm not gonna think about it again. In fact, where's my little piece of plastic? I'm gonna get rid of it. Okay, here we go. I'm not gonna think about the Walmart bags anymore for a little while. Anyway, so I've got that uh, off my chest, those damn thin Walmart bags. Okay, so here we go. This is the page we're going to do today and I'm not quite sure uh, what I'm gonna do yet. I do know that I'm, okay, yeah, here we go. I do know that I'm gonna use um, it's a little sketchbook that where I practice uh, faces and eyes and all kinds of stuff. But I was just looking through here because I, I wanna put a face on today's art journal jazz, but I'm not gonna, ooh, I like that one. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not in the mood to really draw a face. So I made a copy of this face and um, because my copy machine is not a laser jet, my copies tend to smear if I put gel medium over them. So the copy is out on my porch right now because I just sprayed it with sealer. So I'll go get it in a minute so that I can um, glue it to my page without the pencil or the copy machine ink smearing everywhere. But this is the face that I'm going to use. And then I think I'm gonna paint over it I'm gonna pull out my Neocolor 2 crayons today. And my sister, thoughtful person that she is, um, bought a stack of scrapbook paper uh, for me when, last time she was at uh, the craft store. So, I have tons of scrapbook paper, but I don't have this page. It's by American Crafts, The Color of Memories. But it's a map of Lower Manhattan. So, because I'm going to be there in a couple weeks, I think I'm going to use this map on here somewhere. So, let me get together uh, my crayons and my girl's face and everything else I'm going to need. And I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. Wish I had a nice YooHoo glue stick. But I don't, and I've talked about this before. For some reason, I cannot find 
a YooHoo glue stick at any of the stores in my town. Not the craft store, not Walmart, or Home Depot, or Lowe's, or you know, obviously, obviously I could buy it online, but every time I'm buying things online, I forget to add uh, the YooHoo glue stick to my order. Oh well, one of these days. One of these days, I will remember. Okay, let's try not to glue this to the next page. Two. I hope my head is not covering the whole camera. No, it's not. Okay. Let's see, my sister and I will be having brunch at our favorite place right across the street from Dick Blick's, and that is actually right here, one, one block up. I think it's on 21st or 23rd. This cute little restaurant that we found two years ago when we were in New York and we really enjoyed it so we went back whoops, last year and we will be going back again this year and this year I'm going to try to uh, maybe do a live Facebook while I'm in Dick Blick's now I don't know how interesting that will be to you guys <laughs> because maybe you all have Dick Blick's in your town but I don't so the only time I get to go is when I'm in New York and I just love that store just love it This, and then I'll cut off the excess. And my sister, who is also an artist, she loves it. We already have our list of things that we plan to purchase. Okay, there we go. There's our background. And let me trim this off. Finally, finally I picked up some uh, small scissors today at Walmart. Dollar forty-four. They're actually sharp. All I have are large scissors. Uh-oh, look, the sun's going in. It's getting dark. Am I going to have to turn on the light? Let me turn on the light just for a little bit. I hope that doesn't whoops, mess this up too much. Okay, there's my background. And uh, I made a little change. I chose a different face. Um... I had this face and I sprayed it with the sealer and I decided why am I putting a face with flowers on it over a map of New York City I mean if I were going to Hawaii that might make sense or some tropical island but that's not good so I switched faces uh, let me go grab that I'll be right back okay uh, this is the face that I'm going to use actually I made the copy on um, a gel press print or actually this looks like um, a page where I was cleaning off my brayer but anyway so I made the copy on that and then I sprayed some fixative on it but I think I'm gonna add a little uh, gesso here and there to 
tone this background down a little bit. I love these rubber rollers. Uh, Flora Valley got me hooked on the rubber rollers. I took several of her classes online and she uses them a lot. And I love them. You can just get a nice uh, texture with them. And you can, you know, go heavy or go light like I'm doing. I'm just putting a, a light, light coat on here. Being careful not to put too much on, although, you know, I could always remove it. If I put this, maybe right there, <laughs> I'm not really sure what I'm going to do uh, with this page. I haven't really thought about it. I don't know what, you know, what I'm going to write. I don't know what I'm going to put on it. I don't know. I don't know, but I want a little more just so I know that. Whoops. <laughs> I'm flipping it everywhere. Flipping it everywhere. Did you guys see that? Uh, <laughs> my Monday video? I did some acrylic pouring. After I finished that video, I noticed I had paint all over my floor. I mean, not that that's unusual. My husband, every time he comes up here, he complains that I have paint uh, all over the floor. But but there's a little more than usual. I'm just going like this to make a little texture here and there. And as you can see, I have a problem. Actually, my paper's not sticking here. It bubbled up. But, let's see. Maybe I can do this. I'm not worried about it too much. It's just gonna, it's an art journal, and it's just gonna add texture to the page. There we go. All right. Let me let this dry just a little bit, and then I'll put my face on and think about what I'm gonna do. I'm going to do something that, as I put uh, this yellow paper under my pages so I don't ruin the pages under. Now, this gesso is, is still wet. And I'm going to do something that I've never done before. I'm just going to add my acrylic ink to the wet gesso and uh, see what happens. You know, I don't know if it'll make any difference at all or if all my gesso's gonna disappear or what's gonna happen. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it, let's see. Let's see what happens here. Sound effects. Okay, let's do some dripping. Can you see it? You can see a little bit, can't you? It's really not making any difference whatsoever. Yeah, it kind of is. It's kind of making, uh, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's kind of making a cool look in here. It's almost like a, a granulated kind of look that you get with watercolor sometimes. Uh, let's see. Let me grab another color here. Let me grab some. See, this is, that was the, uh, oh yeah, it's very granulated, granulated. Uh, that was the F.W. De La Rowney. Now I'm going to add some. Bombay. 
in here. And then we'll add a little, a little blue too. That was magenta that I just put on there, but we'll add a little blue. I love these inks. I've really been using them a lot recently. see what's going on, can't you? Come on, come on, come on. Let's go back and forth, and maybe a little this way. Maybe down a little this way. Maybe add some more turquoise. This will really go crazy. Is that gonna stay like that? I don't know. Let me grab some white. Let's put a little white in here too. Oh, I'm getting so excited. It's so fun to do something different. Even when it's just something little like this. You know, usually. <laughs> When I'm putting this much ink on, I'm not putting it on just paper like this. It's usually on a canvas or some heavy duty paper. So, you know, this is probably really gonna, you know, crinkle up my paper. This is really shiny and I'm loving the, the colors that I'm getting in here. Let's see if I can go this way a little bit. And I need some more things going on down over here. Boop, 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 boop. You know, I've lost a lot of my map now. Well, I don't know. Yeah, you can still see the map through there. I think this is good. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry and uh, let's see what happens when this dries. Could be very cool. I mean, obviously my paper is sticking up a lot here, but I'll try to glue that down after, you know, at the end. It's coming up here. Yeah, good thing. Just an art journal. We'll be all right. Okay, I'll be back. I'm gonna dab a little, uh, I think the sun's back out now. Turn that off. Um, I'm gonna dab a little gold here and there. And I just had a big accident after I turned the camera off. I spilled my bottle of Blue Bombay. And as you can see, I tried to clean it up with this page in my journal. <laughs> oh, Cindy, what a mess. What a mess you are. Yeah, I like, um, I've done this a few times. Well, that's where the face is going to be. I don't need to waste it. Um, I've done this a few times recently where I just put little dabs of gold here and there. It looks really pretty when it dries. Oops, too much. Too much. Just want some little, little, little dabs. Work, does it? Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. That doesn't work. Okay, that's enough. Enough playing around. Okay, let's let it dry. Okay, here we are. This is all dry. And this is either, um, this is either 
very cool or very ugly. I don't know. Anyway, I was going to use this, but no. Now I've changed my mind. Now I'm going to use this, I believe, because I don't want there's so much color over here. I don't want to put a lot of color into the face. So let's glue her on here. Oh, to have a glue stick. Wouldn't it be wonderful? It would be wonderful if I had a glue stick. But I don't. And in fact, I'm almost out of my Mod Podge. This is really, really pathetic. I need to take a trip to the uh, art supply store or to Amazon. Crazy. I don't want to get a lot of... Um, the Mod Podge on the front because after I did all of that sealing of copies, uh, this copy, I don't think I actually sealed, so it will probably smear when it gets wet. Let's see. <gasps> or not. Look at that. Maybe I did seal this one. Hey, things are looking up. I can't find... can't find a little gift card thing that's not all yucked up with paint. So let's do it with my ruler here. Okay, there we go. There's the face. I don't know what I'm going to do over in here. Um, let's see, maybe... Maybe, maybe, hmm, let me look for my Stabilo All Pencil. And of course, can't find it, so I'm going to use, um, my ink tents. pencil. <laughs> uh, it's hard for me even to say one word while I'm drawing something. Let's just do something simple <clears throat> like this. Let's say this is very very simple. Go like that and like that. And like that. Okay. And Am I going to use my Neo Color 2s? Uh, I think I will. Where are they? Okay, here we go. Um, you know, I was just watching the news. I shouldn't do that. I should not do that before I do while I'm working on an art journal jazz because it's going to encourage me to talk about things that everyone does not agree on. But um, let's go anyway. The whole issue um, with all of the women Section. Sorry about that. My phone went off. Finally coming to light is a good thing. However, this kind of thing has come to light before. 
and it didn't really change things. I remember the Anita Hill story when I was really young, and I remember watching um, those hearings. And Clarence Thomas still became a Supreme Court uh, justice. Didn't really matter to anybody, you know, what he did. I think with what's happening now, you know, we have to use some common sense, and this should not be a political issue at all. It should be a morality issue and a common sense issue. If a man grabs somebody's butt 15 years ago, 2015 years ago, should they lose their job? I would say no, if they're not still doing it. Um, if they've shown to be decent in, in other ways and, and they're not continuing that behavior. Now, should someone who messed around or attempted to mess around with underage girls, should they lose their job? Yes. Yes, they should. Um, that's abhorrent uh, behavior. It's illegal. And every adult man knows that you're not supposed to um, uh, mess around with, with young girls. I mean, <laughs> that goes pretty much without saying, doesn't it? Uh, don't you moms and dads out there teach your sons and daughters? that you shouldn't, I'm sorry that I'm talking so uh, slowly and weird, but I'm trying to draw at the same time. I mean, you teach your kids, you know, <laughs> not supposed to do that. You know, grown-ups mess around with grown-ups. You don't uh, mess around with kids. And it, it, it does, you know, and there's this thing going on. Well, um, the child allowed it to happen. Well, when, when you're, you know, 14, 15, 16 years old, your decision-making power is not uh, at its best at that time, my God. I mean, you can't make adult decisions when you're that age. So there's no such thing as being, you know, a willing participant. The adult in the situation it should control the situation and say, even if they're being encouraged, no, this isn't right. This isn't right. This isn't what good people do. This is illegal. And there's really, I mean, there's, there's no excuse for it. There's really no excuse for it. And there's certainly no excuse for, you know, defending it. Now, as far as doing something crude to an adult woman. Is that indicative of a, you know, stupid behavior? Yeah. Yeah, it's really stupid behavior. Um, and yes, I've had, when I was younger, a lot of experience with this. I worked in a bank and the higher-ups in that bank were just, they were all men, and, and they were despicable because I was in my early 20s, and they were all in their mid-40s, early 50s, and most of them were going through their first divorce. So, you know, they thought who they were, as my uh, 
late father-in-law would say. And uh, yeah, it, it was it was a terrible situation. It was a really terrible situation for me. I eventually left it. Um, and if I had been older, it would have been a more difficult decision for me to, to leave because it would have been harder for me to find a job. If I had been in my 50s, it would have been very difficult to find a, a job. But because I was young, you know, there were lots of jobs out there. This is really turning out terrible, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna go with it. It's because I didn't put gesso down. But would I, okay, I, I was never uh, sexually attacked. I was just bugged all the time. <laughs> I mean, it was constant. These old guys were just constantly, you know, calling me at home. Um, the uh, head of the, I, I worked at a bank, the chairman of the board and the board of directors, I remember one time, you know, he caught me out in the hallway and he's asking me, you know, to uh, take off work and go out on his boat with him. And of course, I'm trying to be nice because I'm, I think I was 21 at the time and, you know, I looked at him as being a person with a lot of power and at that point, you know, I really wanted uh, a career in banking. Um, but, you know, I said, you know, no, I'm working. And his response was, well, you know, I'm chairman of the board. I think I have a little bit of say over that. You know, I think we can, uh, we can get you out of work today. And just that arrogant, really arrogant attitude. I, I had a boss that... Uh, on Secretary's Day, you know, on Secretary's Day, I don't even know if they still have that. Um, you're supposed to take your secretary out to lunch. So all day, I'm waiting. Lunchtime comes and goes. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And finally it occurred to me, you know, he's going to wait until the very end of the day. I know him, this whore dog. He's going to wait until the very end of the day. So that we, uh, and then make an excuse why we don't have to go back to work. And that's exactly what he did. Wait till the very end of the day. He takes me to a restaurant that's really known more as a bar. It's about 4.30. The day ends at 5 o'clock. We get there at 4.30. And then, of course, you know, have lunch. And he's like, well, we don't need to go back to work. And let's head over to uh, this other bar, blah, blah, blah. I said no, and he kept pushing it and pushing it, but uh, I didn't end up going, thank God, because I was totally repulsed by this guy. But they just got away with that crap all the time. And if that had been known, should he have been fired then? Yes. Should he be fired 30 years later? No unless that's still common behavior for him. But if I had been 14 at the time, should he be fired now? Yes, because that was illegal. And everybody's like, well, why didn't they come out earlier? Why didn't they come out earlier? Because women don't come out. Because you're afraid to come out because you know that people are going to believe the more powerful person. You see what's happening right now. I mean, people are choosing to believe the person in power and everybody's going, you know, after these women trying to ruin their reputations and stuff for coming out and, you know, telling their story. And I can tell you right now, you know, I'm a different person than I was when I was 14. And if that had happened to me when I was 14, I'm now 57. I'm the kind of person now that could come out and say something about it. I would not have been the type of person at 14 who could have because I know what would have happened. I would have gotten in trouble. My parents would have blamed it on me 
and then I would have been punished and not able to, uh, you know, leave the house ever again. So no, I would not have come out. But yes, if it had happened, I would come out about it now. So, you know, we have to use some common sense about these things. I mean, the, the Weinstein, you know, that, that's not something that he did a long time ago. He's still doing it. He's taking advantage of young actresses. So should he be blackballed? Yes. Should he be uh, criminally prosecuted? I don't know what the laws are, but yes. Um, but if he was doing this 30 years ago, saw the light, totally changed his life, and it was never an underage person, then no. So, you know, common sense. It's a common sense issue. I mean, some of these stories are just ridiculous. Now, Charlie Rose, who, you know, I like to watch Charlie Rose. Now it's coming out. I, I guess he was uh, making his female employees work at his house and spend the night and doing all kinds of, you know, whack things. Um, and yes, yes, he should get in trouble for that. If he smacked one on the butt 20 years ago, then no, probably not. Should he be humiliated over it? Should it come to light? Sure. But should he lose his whole career over it? No. If it was a one-time thing, you know, he did something stupid, smacked somebody on the butt, admits to it, apologizes, and has not done it since. Um, you know, we have to look at it in a different way. I mean, I don't know. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? You know, I certainly don't want to appear anti, uh, woman because I'm all for women standing up for themselves. And I like the fact that this is coming out and maybe... You know, this is going to make a lot of men who, um, young men going out into the workforce who have those asshole tendencies, maybe it'll make them think a little bit and uh, perhaps change their ways or people that are already, you know, out in the uh, workforce. You know, you come there to go to work, not to be made miserable. And, you know, and the terrible thing is, you know, most of these men that do this are married. Now, you can correct me on that because I don't really know what the stat is, but it just seems that most of these men are married. I mean, what's wrong with you? humiliating, humiliating your wife, somebody that, you know, is supposed to, you know, be important to you, humiliating your children, and, and they do it because they feel like they can get away with it forever. Oh, she'll never tell. Now, Al Franken. Um, I don't know what his motivations were, but looking at that picture... It seems like his motivations are just stupidity. <laughs> um, obviously, you know, if he was wanted to do something really uh, malicious, he wouldn't have taken a picture of him doing it. But, I mean, you know, stupid. Just stupid and childish. Um... You know, Roy Moore with the 14-year-old when he was 32, and it's not just the 14-year-old, other underage, I guess, nine um, women have come out at this point, and I think, you know, five of them were underage, four or five of them. I mean, come on. For the mall? To have to ban a grown man from the mall because the parents were complaining? There's no defense for that, my God. 
there's no defense at all. You know, and then people blaming this girl when she was 14. Well, she shouldn't have been at his house. You know, she was going along with it. My God, she was 14. She was dumb as a rock. You know, I was dumb as a rock when I was 14. My God, when I look back at the stupid things I did, and I'll tell you, you know, when an adult man is paying attention to you, when you're in puberty, oh, you think you're hot shit and all this stuff, you don't realize how wrong it really is. But you don't, there, there's no, uh, oh, she consented. No, there's no consent when you're 14 years old. My God. The grown-up is the one who's supposed to know better, not the child. I mean, you know, there, there's really not a lot of defense for that. You know, and this is not exactly something that a woman comes forward to do for fame. I mean, these women are not getting good publicity. I mean, they're, they're getting death threats. They're being called everything on TV. My God, yesterday I'm, I'm listening to Christian ministers saying derogatory things about these women. I mean, the one minister said something about, oh, she must have been having some sweet dreams over the years. Ugh, my God. Uh, how can you? I mean, how can you look yourself in the mirror? That's just crazy. So this, this, you know, this should not be a, a political thing. I mean, you know, Louis C.K. I loved him. I mean, he's hysterical. And I'm assuming that he's, well, I'm not assuming. I'm pretty sure he is a Democrat. But, I mean, that, that's ridiculous what he was doing taking off his clothes and masturbating in front of people? I mean, <laughs> come on. You know, we have to, uh, you know, we can't defend everything just because somebody has, you know, a D or an R after their name. We have to use some common sense sometimes. I mean, there are people, there are Republicans that do some really crappy things, and there's some Democrats that do some really crappy things, and we do not have to defend them just because, you know, they're in our particular party. I mean, is that all we care about? Is that really all we care about? <laughs> is, you know, who wins? My God. Anyway... Did I say I wasn't going to rant today? Or was that, or did I just say I wasn't going to rant about Walmart? I hope I said it was just about Walmart because uh, that was quite the little rant I just went on. Sorry. Of course... You guys, since you know that uh, if you feel one of these things coming on in the future, you can just turn down your volume. Say, oh no, God, she's getting ready to do it. She's getting ready to do it again. Turn down the volume. But I'd like to get other people's uh, opinions. And, you know, I hope that... Uh, People, and I, I know most of my uh, demographic here, you know, most of my watchers are women. And I hope that you don't think that by saying that someone who grabbed somebody's butt 20 years ago shouldn't be fired, that I'm, you know, defending them in any way. I mean, I, I guess. I can't say it anyway. I, I am sort of defending them. But I just think that we have to look, you know, not all crimes, well, these aren't, not all incidents are equal. Grabbing someone's butt is not the same 
is having a 14-year-old girl take her clothes off and attempt to have sex with her. It's just, it's not the same. Grabbing people's butts, we're adults, that's not okay. But, you know, it's sort of like all crimes are not the same. You don't get the death penalty for stealing a candy bar. You shouldn't in our country. You shouldn't get the death penalty for stealing a candy bar. Or you should, let's say you shouldn't get life in prison for stealing a candy bar. But you should, you know, for raping and killing a child. I changed it from life in prison, uh, from death penalty to life in prison because then I'd have to go into a whole death penalty rant and I don't want to uh, freak you guys out with that. Th look at this, look at this mess that I made here. Let's, um, let's put some other colors in here. Let's put some other colors in to really make it weird. See if we can really make it weird here. Okay. Oh yeah, look at that. Now I'm really, really weird, making it weird. Well, we'll see what happens when it dries. Actually, I don't think anything good is gonna happen when this dries. But let's put some purple. some purple in her hair. And some darker purple in her hair. I really love these uh, Neo Color 2s, but it's really not wise to use them as you can see on top of a non-gessoed surface. Look there, I ripped the paper. Um, where's my, this is ink black. Okay, let's go to this. Let's darken this up. All right. Let's let this dry and then I'll come back and try to uh, do something to save it. Okay, we're pretty, pretty much dry here. And now that this is dried, it's not as um, offensive as it was. Let's see. Let's, let's add some little highlights here and there. Let's see. Uh, hmm, 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 hmm. Which way is, I don't even know. I don't know which way my light's coming in. I don't even know on this. And it really doesn't matter that much because it's my journal page. Ooh, look at that. Okay, white pen, white pen. Let's see, let me make her little eye glint thing. Uh-oh. Weird. Okay. Let's see. Maybe a little down her nose. Still, of course, have the problem with with bleed through because the ink tents uh, pencils they will bleed through too. Of course, okay. It's enough with her face. Let's see. Let's do some. Do a little shading around these thingies. 
to make them stand out a little bit more. Uh-oh, radio silence. Well, it's almost Thanksgiving. I'll be going to my sister's house for Thanksgiving, and we're both cooking. I will be making my famous broccoli casserole that I make every year for Thanksgiving and Christmas. And it's a recipe that um, I received back when I was probably 19 years old. I worked at a credit union. Um, when I first moved to Gainesville, and we used to have around the holidays, we'd have like, you know, I guess potluck uh, luncheons there and this woman made um, broccoli casserole and it's just delicious and I hate to say this but the secret ingredient is cheese whiz and yes I know I know how disgusting that sounds and I usually don't say it to people out loud that I put cheese whiz in there but I do Cheese Whiz, Minute Rice, <laughs> Cream of Mushroom Soup, uh, frozen chopped broccoli, a little milk, a little butter. It's delicious. Everybody loves it. Everybody asks that I make it every year. I also make um, sweet potatoes, and I do not do the thing where I mash them all up. I slice my sweet potatoes. And then I cook them with butter, brown sugar, and walnuts. And if I do say so myself, they are delicious. Um, my sweet potatoes, I think, are better than anyone else's. Although, one Thanksgiving years ago, I went to Alabama with a former boyfriend and uh, let me tell you <laughs> that trip was a trip uh, because his mother had married this Alabama doctor who was really from the old school and it, it was like going back in time to a southern plantation it was really uh, it was so offensive in so many ways. Um, but the woman there, um, the cook, made, she didn't use sweet potatoes. She used some kind of squash, and I never really could get uh, what kind of squash she used because I asked her several times. And she kept telling me, but I, I just couldn't understand what she was saying. And it, it sounded like she was saying Kushaw, Kushaw squash. <laughs> and I have looked uh, for a squash that sounds like that. I know there's a Crenshaw squash. And I did buy that one time, but it wasn't the same. But I don't know how she made it. She squashed it all up. She added a ton of sugar. It was delicious. Uh, similar to sweet potatoes, except it was more yellow. And if any of you guys know what I'm talking about, know what kind of squash she might have been using, please tell me. It, it was the most delicious thing I've ever eaten, and I would love to be able to, uh, to make it. But yeah, so I'll be cooking sweet potatoes and broccoli casserole.
My sister will be making the turkey and the stuffing. She makes good stuffing, okay? I like her stuffing. But I really, really, really like my stuffing. But I haven't made it for several years because we always eat her stuffing. But my stuffing, um, I put apples and walnuts and cranberries and I use uh, cornbread breadcrumbs. It's delicious, and I do not put celery or onions in it because I hate celery and onions, and I know that most people like celery and onions, but I don't like it, so I don't put it in there. Uh, but my stuffing's delicious, but we will not be having it. But anyway, yeah, so I gotta go grocery shopping. You know, I went grocery shopping uh, yesterday, but I had the sweet potato incident in the Walmart with the, uh, see how everything just circles back around? I'm back to the Walmart bags. Uh, yeah, those chintzy Walmart bags. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to go back to the store and get some sweet potatoes. Okay. Let's see, let's take out this fine liner. And you know, I started this page with the map and it was gonna have something to do with going to New York, and then I got on the rant about, um, can you hear that music? It's my husband downstairs. Um, and I got on the rant about sexual harassment, and I think this page is going to be about common sense. We need to have it. <laughs> yeah, I'm really grasping at straws today. I love this fine liner. I'm going to add some words that are, uh, that we can read. But I'm just trying to uh, add some interest with this. Let's see, uh, 10 years from now when I look at this, I'll have no idea what this says. Okay, enough of that. Let's see, let's see if I can find a quote. Uh-oh, can you hear that? Now he's uh, brought out the harmonica. He's really into playing harmonica recently. My husband is uh, quite the musician. He plays guitar, we both play guitar, but I rarely, I don't, I don't play enough anymore. Why can't I get this back in? Anyway, he plays guitar, he plays drums, he plays harmonica. I'm sure he plays some other things too. Anyway, uh, let me look up a quote. I'll be right back. Okay, I found a quote. Common sense is a flower that doesn't grow in everyone's garden. Let's make my little Apostrophes here. Cut these babies out. Okay. <clears throat> Last night I was watching. Um, a little online class. It's like, it's about an hour, hour and a half video by Dina Wakely. Um, what is that Artist Network TV? You can go on there and purchase individual classes or you can pay uh, a monthly fee. And I think there's something like, 
you know, 750 classes. And I pay the monthly fee. And I watch a lot of those videos and I go back. There's some that I've watched several times. Jody All has five or six on there. Um, Mary Beth Shaw, like I said, Dina Wakely, uh, Ray Missignan, Missignan, I don't know how she pronounces her name, but there's a lot of good artists. Now, there's also a lot of uh, videos on painting realism. And I've never watched those because I'm not really into painting realism, but if you are, there's tons of videos on there. Um, painting realism and oil painting and watercolor and just about any technique you can think of. But anyway, so I'm watching a Dina Wakely one on uh, painting animals because I, why did I cut that apart? I didn't even want that cut apart uh, because I really want to um, do some animal paintings. I want to do some dogs and cats. And I especially would like to do my two dogs. They both passed away, but I'd love to do like whimsical paintings of them. For some reason, animals are just really hard for me. I can't get that animal face down. Okay, common sense. Common sense is a flower that doesn't grow in everyone's garden. Okay, I'm gonna need to be really careful because my black um, ink, it's not really ink, it's acrylic paint mixed with water. It's not dry, but I'm really always in a hurry. So I try to very carefully glue these on Whoops, sounds like he's turning that up louder and louder. I don't know who this is. If you can hear it, I don't know who that is. He just told me who it was because he was telling me that I should use this guy's music on one of my videos. I, I've had a lot of people ask me about the music that I use on my videos recently. And a lot of times I come up with the song before I come up with the piece of art that I'm gonna do. Um, then other times I'll make the art and then I'll ask my husband, uh, give me a song about flowers. Give me a song about, you know, whatever. And he literally, no matter what subject, you come up with. He can give you a song about that subject in like a couple seconds. My husband knows every song ever written, I believe. So that comes in really handy because uh, I really like adding the music to my videos to make it more of an experience. To make the video watching experience uh, better. <laughs> I think a lot of people though do not appreciate my musical tastes. they can turn down the volume. And I'm sure that uh, there are people that do, right? Right. All right, I'm starting to ramble on now because I'm getting near the end, getting near the end. Starting to ramble. Okay, let me hit these with a heat gun so that I can outline them. And we are coming down the home stretch here. 
yeah, this, this ended up uh, doing better than I thought it was going to do. It looked really messy. But, you know, it's okay. You know, I should, though, make the whites of her eyes whiter. Let's see if I can do it with this pen. Her eyelashes. It's also good sometimes to give a little highlight above the lip. Like that. Let's give her a little more white on the tip of her nose. And maybe a little white over in here. And let's, see, let's fix her eyelashes a little bit. And what else? What else should I do to her face? You know, I should add a little. Okay, where are my ink tents? Pencils here. Let's see. Let's see. Do I have a little pink? It's not pink. Fuchsia. I don't think we. Well, we'll try it. Put a little pink right there, right? There we go. And maybe a little. Is this gray? Willow. It's probably brownish, but. Make that little shadow inside her eye, right? It's always good to do. And, okay, is this dry? No, of course it's not. Is this dry? No. Of course it's not, but that's okay. We'll, in fact, let's do it with, what's this? No, let's not do it with that. Let's do bark got an outline with this because the ink tense doesn't matter if the Mod Podge is still a little wet it'll still do its thing here I think he's listening to Tom Waits now if you've never listened to Tom Waits, do yourself a favor. <laughs> that guy is great. Little short Irish guy, and he has the deepest voice. He sings like this. Okay, you can really tell I'm getting uh, I'm getting antsy now, and I'm starting to imitate. Uh, singers. I really need to use these more. I love these. My sister uh, got a set of these when we were in New York last year at Dick Blick's. I don't know if she's, well, I know she used them recently. I need to talk to her about how, uh, she likes them. They're actually so versatile. Very versatile. And they look really uh, really artsy. Alright. Let me grab a tag. Alright. Move this out of the way, and is 
November 21st, 2017. Man, this year has flown by. Okay, this seems obvious. Put this right here. And get these babies out. Need to trim this up down at the bottom here, which I will do after it gets really dry. All right, that's it. Common sense is a flower that doesn't grow in everyone's garden. So yeah, let's try to have some common sense. It's hard though. It's hard sometimes, isn't it? Okay, that's it. Happy Thanksgiving. Peace.